All right. Let's do this without getting in a dang wreck. It's been a long time since I put on a podcast, but the reason is I haven't had a lot of content to even talk about. We are into December. I believe today is the last day of November or tomorrow is, but we are almost into to December. We had a great Thanksgiving holiday. I fried up a big old Turk and it was delicious. We smoked a ham. We smoked corn. We smoked a bunch of stuff and it was pretty good. We like doing that. I like to perfect the tire tire. The turkey frying deal. I like the way that comes out. I hope that your family had a good Thanksgiving. We got a lot going on during the holidays. It's not all good feelings and fun sometimes. Sometimes we reflect on our family members and it it can be sad at times. So if you're feeling sad, try to get out in the woods spend your time outdoors that's one of the things that helps me get out there get in the woods just on a trail or I fish a lot so fishing helps too but find something that makes you happy get to the church help decorate some Christmas trees grab a donation card that maybe a school needs a Uh, some toys or something I don't know but it's not all just fun 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 let me get the presents it can be pretty tough during the holidays so if you're feeling like that reach out all right Lake of the Ozarks right now Lake of the Ozarks is finally getting water temperatures down in the lower 50s I don't know what the temps are at the dam. I probably don't know what the temps are where everybody's catching these big fish. I have not hooked into a big fish since about, I don't know, deer season it seems like. I was catching some pretty big fish on the spinnerbait around deer season, which here in Missouri I think starts November the 10th. So I hunted real hard the opening, the week before rifle season and finally messed around, messed around during rifle season, ended up getting a few deer, then got back out on the water and the water temps had dropped so much that I had to adjust a lot, but I think it really helped the bite. In fact, last weekend was one of the first weekends that I really saw a good push shallow even though it was super cold the problem is I was fishing way up the river and I think the change was a little bit too drastic and the water temps up there was around 51 degrees which they had water temps in up around 60 the week before so I think it was a little bit too much of a change up there in the dirtier water and if you were in clean clear water which as of all year long we've seen clear water in the glaze and in the arms from anywhere from the 23 mile marker all the way up to the dam so that goes around the you know, four seasons area all the way around the mouth of the gravois, etc., to the dam, which is normally the clearest water areas. I guess what I'm saying is we have more clear water in areas that usually are not. But every cove is different. Every cove has different water clarity, and not every cove or creek is the same as far as the shad goes. So it's been a bit, little bit different. The everybody says, "Oh, the the water is lower than it is normally this time of year." Really, I don't know. It by now we've usually we've got some water levels that are 
where they are right now normally I don't know I don't I haven't done the research but I do know this so a lot of stuff sticking out of the water there's some obviously some big rock and big big logs that you can find that are sticking out like sore thumbs that are holding fish there are a lot of shallow points and a lot of shallow rounded points that have little little points that stick out that have some bigger rock on it and not necessarily even some rounded off big black rock that we're normally looking for this time of year to throw our buzz baits to throw our chopos to throw our big spinner baits even spinner baits with big number seven blades on them normally what we're looking for but some of these points just have what I call like little shelf rock, little shelves on it. And not only, it's not, it's almost like a subtle little, not a bluff, but this is little shelf rock. And if you can find that and it's just under the surface and you've got that little stair step down and it's on a flatter point, that's money right now. That is the juice for me. Now, after this water temperature kind of cooled off, the crankbait really turned on so it's not a rule of thumb a lot of people say well it's in the 60s i'm still throwing a spinnerbait when it gets into the 50s i'm throwing the crankbait lake of the ozarks is a little bit different to where if you get a steady 55 degree temp and it's steady you know not that initial big drop and it's and they get comfortable up there they're gonna be where the shad are and the shad get comfortable up there so you can still throw a big spinnerbait and still throw a buzz bait, a whopper plopper, um, a jerk bait, a, maybe even a big floating jerk bait might be a sleeper bait right now. Your jigs, your neds, your shaky heads, all that stuff's still going to work. We, uh, but what I'm trying to get at is the crankbait really has turned on the Norman Deep Little Inn. That's my favorite fall crankbait course your old wiggle warts your dt6s your dt4s even your flat sides Ooh, those old school flat sides maybe a an old wc wec zoom mutt if you know anything about that call your tennessee boys call the arkansas boys they can learn you on some old flat sides those baits are worth a lot of money but i still throw them i love Cliff Pace's Wood Bait Company, I think Black Market Balsa, and then there is also a bunch of custom square bills from Dave over in Warsaw. He's got it's called Black Market Balsa too. I don't know. <laughs> they have similar names, and I'm sorry that I messed that name up probably, but those are some of the best wood balsa crankbaits that you can get your hands on and both of those are well worth the money very good quality and they just catch big fish they just catch they run right they are durable the paint jobs hold up on them when you order from dave he'll give you the right split rings and the right hooks that work the best on those baits and that's one of my favorite things to throw right now. Now, when you get into the colder tips, like like up in the river this past weekend, we had that 51 degrees. We had some really cold nights and some cold wind. That flat side comes into play, but the slow moving wiggle wart and the deep little end was my go-to. The crappie have moved in. Let's talk about crappie a little bit. When I say moved in, I caught crappie a lot better than I have for a while. It was pretty much really like the spring. The only the only issue I had was, you know, in March or when they're really biting, you can catch a lemon out of the same brush pile. And you would catch four or five, six really nice crappie out of a pile, and then they would just kind of turn off. So they're not really 
loaded or biting as just as good as they can, but still a significant difference on the shallower crappie and docks that are normally good all year where I think a lot of crappie have been out there in the abyss and they just really moved in on the shad and <clears throat> excuse me started biting a lot better so that's one thing that I wanted to record today was the water temps 51 ish up the river they've kind of evened out from what I hear people are finding 55 degrees people are still finding 56 57 in some areas but I don't know where those areas are at because I mostly what I'm finding is in that 51 52 53 already so we're going to get into those winter time patterns real quick I'm not surprised I would not be surprised if people are catching fish on the a rig already fish on jerk baits I think right now is a transition time where you can try anything. Of course, the old jig, Dirk's jig, uh, Eakin's jig, a finesse type jig. And I've really played a lot with jigs that aren't really considered a finesse jig, but they're a little bit smaller than say your big structure jig or your big football jig or a, you know a swim jig or a, a normal flipping jig you know with a big old four odd or five odd hook in it the i believe it's apex tackle they've got the jig andy newcomb's jig that's kind of what i'm talking about it's more of that it's a flipping jig but it's kind of an all around of everything you can cut the skirt off the top make it a finesse jig or it's just got that compact size where it's not quite as big as the other jigs, but it just it gets bit. And another example would be like the baby structure jig from Strike King. Those those sizes, those it's like the medium size. Now you can still get them in a half ounce, but the just the profile, the overall I don't know the the style of it, I wouldn't call it finesse, but I still wouldn't call it your big, definitely not a, you know, a three quarter ounce Omega or one ounce Omega with a big old pocket chunk on it. You know, it's not that big profile jig, but so that's really been working well. I like that Bojangles Z Daddy as a trailer. That seems to be my number one. The Striking Menace has been absolutely killer this year. The old Double Tail Grub from Yamamoto, the Zoom Fat Albert, those all still work tremendously. A lot of times with those medium size, a lot of a lot of times instead of using a five inch grub, I'll go to like a Yamamoto four inch. A four inch has slimmer, slimmer, little tinier tails on it a little bit smaller than that five inch so just matches the jig a little bit better and then some days they don't want a flappy trailer so the beavers the smally beaver your d-bombs baby d-bomb those type of of trailers work really really well and uh, don't forget you know some days it's been it's been tough out there it's and i don't know everybody always says oh, it's tough it's tough they always say it's tough well what's tough right now is you'll go 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 you'll cover miles with the top water and you might not get bit and it, so it takes a long time to run into them and once you do you you might get a big bite and that might throw you off and you do that same thing or try to duplicate that pattern and then not get bit so it's tough right now so to kind of to kind of really fill in that gap you got one or two choices you can cover tons of water with the same bait never put it down that works sometimes but i've been keeping a ned rig out and kind of throwing that around a little bit and 
it'll get you out of your rhythm so you don't want to do that and you don't want to just junk fish but it is one of the time of year times of the year where you might have to if you're in a tournament or if you have a kid out fishing and you want to fill in that gap to where you're you're catching some fish at least in between time so right now not really a drop shot but really that ned rig and and a, a tube a stupid tube which if you don't know what that is you can get on blue rock custom tackle and look at their tiktok he's got a lot of videos on how to rig a stupid tube there's of course other tube companies out there that kind of coin that term with a stupid tube your chompers your four inch five inch hula grubs those work a lot better for me right now than getting out deep with a drop shot now if you're a live scoper and you like crappie fishing this is a great time to scope with your bigger crappie jigs as i like to call them but there's a ton of them on the market now and they are getting extremely popular in the professional tournament side wheeler's got some baits out with the bmc head with i think a, a rapala i don't know what they call it but it's a lot of the shad type baits without the flap and tail this is nothing new this is nothing new at all i don't know how many times at toledo bend we would be out crappie fishing and we would use a fluke on a jig head or a fluke on a just a you know a chatterbait with no with no skirt on it or but what i'm getting at is the fluke baits have been out forever it's nothing new this is just a new mouse trap now one thing that did catch my eye with some of these baits when you pick the right jig head it has a belly shake as it falls and it all side to side just a wobble as it falls so it does have a different action so that's something that you need to check out you need to go to jacob wheeler's youtube page and check that out because if that's the difference maker sometimes maybe you need to have your good old lead head jig head with a fluke on it maybe a good old you know bojangles makes a bunch of different minnow type baits that work well he has some with fatter bodies on it it makes the jig head fall a little bit different if you like crappie fishing of course you've got tons of bobby garland shads i don't know all the names of them but they make the bigger sizes those are killer <clears throat> if you like to scope them and there are, is a lot of shad that are out there in that 20 30 40 50 foot range that you could scope now you might excuse me you might run into white bass stripers catfish all the other stuff that's out there chasing those shad with them but if you can find a school of big kentuckys or a school of largemouth you can absolutely catch every single one of them if you can stay with them and follow them with your troll motor you don't have to have live scope to do this we've been doing it with 2d forever you look for the spaghetti noodles you look for the streakers you can do it with a flasher you don't have to go spend all the money of course live scope makes it a lot a lot easier i hope i can still go out there this weekend and catch maybe maybe a good topwater fish i don't know if the topwater is over i have a feeling for me it probably is i'm not saying that somebody won't go out and just catch a giant on the right place on on a buzz bait or or a plopper but or maybe a spook i don't know big popper if you really like topwater this might be your last weekend coming up the first weekend in december I know people that's caught huge bass on buzz baits all the way up to Christmas. So if you want to do that, I would say right now you better find the warmest water you can. And you might want a little bit of clarity to the water. Or on the other side of the coin, you 
might want the dirtiest, warmest water you can find. The problem is, anytime I get into the dirty water right now, it is colder. It's colder water for some reason. So, I don't know. It could be way off there, but you never know right now. I haven't played with the glide. I haven't even started jerk baiting yet. I probably will this weekend. I'll probably try to jerk bait a little bit. I will definitely have any type of those scope shad type baits on for crappie and for you know fish that are out chasing bait. The A rig, I'm going to start throwing the A rig a little bit, and I'll always have my jigs tied on and. I'll have a net on. So we'll see how that works. I hope that uh, the crappie bite like they have been. If it's anything like it was last weekend, I think it'll only get better. And that is going to be awesome because uh, I really like fall fishing for crappie. And usually just gets better and better and better throughout the winter. And then they start really eating a jerk bait. And it's just... That is a lot of fun through the winter time, and I think I think it started the way they're moving in and eating a jig right now. I think I might go play into some. So don't be afraid to go out there and try a lot of different things right now. A lot of different things are going to work. All right, let's do a little transition here. I got to get some things off my chest. I don't really. It's not really bothered me. Here per se lately but here's the fishing industry news as of right now since nothing's going on of course we have to have a lot of drama in the YouTube world and on social media so Jacob Fouts puts out this video that he is not getting paid by a lot of sponsors I'm just gonna put it out there there's a lot going on in that video and I think Jacob is a hell of a fisherman and he will figure out his sponsor portfolio and how to tackle that market. And he will, I think, learn a lot of life lessons on how to approach different situations and hopefully crack that nut of using your platform with Bassmaster and going out there and, and getting the money that you need to go fish these circuits. It is super expensive. For example, there's a lot of people that have gotten an invite, including myself, to go fish the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. I think a lot of people got that email. If they're going down the list all the way down to me, I'm a co-angler. Last year I finished, I don't know, in the 30s or 40s on the co-angler side. I should have fished way higher but I lost fish and that's the story of last year and so they went down the co-angler list and they're inviting people over I'm not going to get into MLF and what's wrong with MLF but just looking at that situation looking at that video from Jacob and looking at myself there's no way that I would have enough sponsorship money to even go even think about fishing that circuit right now. Now, could I put together a portfolio, give some proposals out? Could I make it happen? I think I could make it happen, but the way life is for us right now, I don't think it's a good time and it's not a good fit. So... A lot of people say, well, why would you do that? BPT's going to hell. We won't. We don't want to associate with the BPT. Opens are where it's at. We need to get into the elites. Well, there's a lot of different ways to look at that. So this will be a good subject to talk to a lot of guys and girls that are thinking about getting into the Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Here's the bottom line, guys. Some of your goals are going to be get into the BPT. I want to fish at the top level. I want to fish where there's a lot of live coverage. That's a whole other issue too. You're not guaranteed any of that. So your goal might be to get to the BPT. Your other goal might be, 
I just want to fish a high dollar tournament with a high risk, high reward type situation. You might be tired of fishing your regional area. You might want to go fish Florida. You might want to go to Sam Raber. You might want to go to Champlain. I, I would love to do that. I would love to get out of the Ozarks a little bit and go up there and fish. I'm not really to that point yet. I'm getting my butt kicked here, and plus I'm not even fishing enough tournaments to really show myself or sponsors or whoever, family, that I'm ready to go do that. So if you're not ready to go to do that, don't do that either. I guess what I'm getting at is I I'm kind of went off on a t- on not what I was trying to say there. I'm sorry I'm talking in circles. But my point is don't do it if you're not ready. Don't do it if you don't have a sponsor portfolio ready to rock and roll that's going to fund you. It's You're going to do work, a lot of work. You have to work your butt off, but I'm saying if you don't have that lined up, don't do it. But here, here's the other, what I was trying to say a minute ago. I'm sorry. There, if you want to go to the BPT, that's great. But here's the, here's the bottom line. Just like the NPFL, just like the AIA here at Lake of the Ozarks, just like any other, let's say Nichols, let's say Bass Champs, let's put any other. You know, mid-tier level, mid to upper level tournament. There's going to be a big entry fee and there's going to be a big payout at the top. So, if you're going to go do high stakes gambling, you know, high risk, high reward, like I said before, then go do it. It's They're still going to have a derby. They're still going to have however many people get in it whether it's 40 or 240, they're still going to pay a top number one guy, girl, that wins that tournament. Every time. Every single time. Six times that year. Six times. They're going to pony up their entry fees. They're going to get in there, and they're going to have a derby. So if you want to go fish some derbies, that's what they're going to do. So I don't fault anybody for trying to go fish a high-stakes tournament. It's just like playing poker or anything else. Golf. Any of that. That's all it is. So, if you're retired and you don't care about the sponsorship and you want to go make some money fishing, go fish them. If you're rich and you got the time, by all means, that's all it is. It's just a tournament. I think a lot of a lot of people are getting so caught up in the sponsorship part of it and the social media part of it that they almost forget, hey, it's a tournament. They try to blend this tournament scene with all that and I get it. I get what they're trying to do. But at the end of the day, you're going to fish a tournament. If you want to go do YouTube, go do YouTube. And if you can blend that, that's what sponsors want now. They want the social media. And I get what they're saying. But like on the Tackle Pro, at the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals, I probably keep calling it the wrong circuit. But the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals are just that. It's just a tournament. Almost anybody can get in it, put your money in, and go fish it. It's the old FLW Tour. They've got this carrot of Bass Pro Tour. If you can make it in there right now, hats off to you, brother, because there are some hammers that are waiting for you at the BPT, and you've got to have an average. I don't... If anybody, like a new guy coming in, like Matt Steffen or... Any any new rookie comes in that haven't has not fished the BPT and they make it into the top fifty or however whatever the number is that they have to finish at. If they can if there's a rookie that fishes in 2024 and then they're still fishing in 2025, 
after all the changes and the rankings that you have to finish at and the money involved. If you can catch them and you're still fishing the BPT in 2025, hats off to you. Hats off to you because you are a hammer. And then you have to do it all across the board. Once you get there, you have to do it across the board because it's too expensive. It's way too expensive. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do social media and all that to to, to be up there. It's going to help. That's what sponsors want. You got to do this for the sponsors. No, you have to have money. That's the bottom line. You got to be able to pay the checks for the entry fees and the gas and the hotels and the campsites and the food and the tackle. You know the deal. So you need money. And that's where I think I was trying to get to another rant of mine right now is how the industry has folded into we are salesmen. I say we, I'm not even in it anymore. That's a whole other podcast. But you need money. So however you can get money, do it. I don't fault anybody for having their drywall business and working their ass off and putting up the money that they need to get out there and play the game. The cattleman, the logger, the the soldier that deploys over and over and saves his money up, figures out how to use compound interest in his favor, and then he uses that money to play the game. However you got to do it. We've molded ourselves into, now we're YouTubers and cinematographers and podcasters, and this is what you got to do to be a pro. Think logically. No, you need money and skill to be a pro. So anyway, I'm not going to go down my soapbox on that, but if you can... I'm not knocking the social media part of it, but it's just weird how we have molded this pro fisherman of this is what you got to do. This is how you got to handle it. Folks, at at the end of the day, you pay your entry fee and you go play the game. That's the bottom line. And if you don't get paid, it's on you. That's the bottom line of it. Every time. If you can mold all this other stuff into it. Then good for you. And you figured it out. And you've cracked the nut. You know how to. Use those platforms. It's tough to do. It's really tough. And there's not. Very many opportunities out there. And the opportunities that are there are taken up by a very, very few amount of people. So, I don't know how we kind of went down that rabbit hole, but I kind of had to get that off my chest. It's just something that I've thought about a lot lately. It just really, it doesn't irritate me, but I just don't like how the fishing industry has molded itself and then We've got to drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak. The good thing about it is it's still fishing. It's still fun. It's still so much fun to go out there at a tournament and put your mouth, <laughs> put your money where your mouth is. Or, or go out there and compete with your buddies, your friends, or other people. Compete in new places. It's just all fun. There's just nothing better than than going out there and doing that. It's the best thing in the world. But the other good part is we're all individuals. So however we skin the cat is our business. And we don't need to point a finger at someone else saying they're doing it wrong. They might not be as successful 
as another person. And they're not going to do it the same way you do. But that's what's cool about this. It's all individual. It's all individual. And if you could put a team together, a team of... Look at Kevin Van Damme. He had a team of sponsors, a team, a family team. I mean, my goodness. Family owned a dealership and a tackle store. Just, It's a team of people that make the individual successful just like anything else in life. So if you can do that, that's what's cool about this sport. You can do it how you want to do it, how you see fit, and what works for you. So that all being said, save every penny that you have. Don't fish anymore. Get a John boat. Do some floating on the gas canade. Call Tommy Bench. He'll teach you how to catch them and then do it at every other body of water. Don't ever enter a <laughs> fishing tournament again and live off goggle eye. See you guys later. Next time on the Daily Drive, we talk about deer hunting in the middle of December on the first big snow. See you again.